China's got this whole folder on you, all your images, all your shit. I can go, okay, Tom in whatever this time of year, what was he talking about? Oh, look at Tom was banging lady boys <laughs> in Thailand. <laughs> so in just under 48 hours, I'm officially going to be a married man. Yep. You know, it's funny because when it comes to this big life event, there seems to always be these challenges and obstacles and things you've got to overcome. I guess you've got to just learn to roll with the punches and it, it's like a good test, I suppose, to keep level-headed. So I guess I'll see you guys on the other side. But no, I'm actually really excited. I'm very grateful that I get to have this opportunity to marry my best friend and soulmate. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. I know this has nothing to do with the podcast, but yeah, it's a pretty big deal for me and I just wanted to share that with you, especially those who've been following this journey for so long. So appreciate all you guys. But on to the podcast. We have Dakota of Earth, one of my best friends and brother in arms. We recorded this podcast in Chiapas, Mexico, where we hosted a really cool travel, spiritual retreat. People came from all over the world and it actually surprised me on how life-changing it was for so many people and how closely people bonded, you know. I think it was uh, definitely a life learning experience for myself and this is definitely something that I'm so excited to continue doing, you know. I think this is a really good opportunity for people to get their feet wet, to connect with like-minded weirdos and have these amazing wild adventures, especially towards more the unexplored parts of these countries. And, you know, I've done two retreats this year, Turkey and Mexico, and we're gonna be doing this again. We haven't officially announced the Mexico one, but we, would, we will do it around October. We're gonna do a similar one, just gonna improve it and tighten up the nuts and bolts and make this a, a better experience for everybody. But there will be a five-day retreat in Oaxaca where we're going to be spending time in Maria Sabina's village and for those who don't know Maria Sabina is basically like the I guess the godmother of mushrooms who brought it to the western world so it's going to be pretty wild experience and I haven't been there myself so it's going to be my first time so if you guys are interested in that feel free to go on my website yourmatetom.com or sign up to my email list actually probably be better just go on the website and that's where you guys will get the first announcements where you can join up because spots fill up fast man if this kind of adventure resonates with you then consider checking out our turkey retreat you can check out my website but we're going to basically explore the ancient mysteries of gobekli tepe and some of the more unknown and more even more authentic and more ancient sites like karahan tepe so if you want to hang out with us go on a cool adventure meet like-minded people and have a life-changing experience, then feel free to sign up. But yeah, anyways, on to our next guest. We don't have to really go into what subjects we talked about. You can check out the timestamps in the description box below. This podcast is also available on iTunes and Spotify, so feel free to subscribe on those platforms. But yeah, that's pretty much it, man. I wasn't going to say this, but I kind of want to vent a little bit because pretty big deal, but my channel actually got a strike. Yep, and YouTube's reasoning, and this is their words, verbatim, I helped promote dangerous content that helped people create hard drugs. That's right, they used literally the words create and hard drugs. And it was funny because, it was for, number one, it was for an unlisted video. Second of all, we were out there with a guide helping people identify poisonous lookalikes of psychedelic mushrooms. So it was a naturally occurring substance growing out in nature, no creation involved, and hard drug, well, I checked out the technical definition of hard drug, and that means a narcotic that often leads to physical addiction, which, as we all know, the evidence points the opposite direction when it comes to psilocybin containing mushrooms. And there is like so much, there are actually videos out there of like, I'm pretty sure there's like a Vice video of a documentary teaching people how to make cocaine. So it's like, that is literally the creation of hard drugs. But yeah, anyways, I'm trying not to let this get to me too much, and it definitely did piss me off for a few days, but I'm like, this ain't gonna be the last time this happens. It's just, I don't know, it's more the inaccuracy that pisses me off. Like, if you wanna give me a strike for dangerous content, it's like, alright, but at least give me a legitimate reason, not 
some fabricated excuse like cr the creation of hard drugs, which is just not true at all. But anyways, I think this is why your guys' support is so important, especially on Patreon. So if shit hits the fan, my channel gets deleted. I mean, if it happened for an unlisted video, man, who knows what reasoning they can come up with. But anyways, hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you want to support this channel, check out patreon.com slash yourmatetom or buy yourself a t-shirt. All links in the description. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. We've got a huge backlog of content in the making, and I don't want to officially announce it quite yet, but I am working on a new channel. Already got a few videos up there. This hasn't been published, but I'm really excited. Keep an eye out. Love you guys, and I'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I mean to say. Yeah, that's what I'm laughing. It was just like laughing from the podcast perspective. You just in the background, just. <laughs> <laughs> oh good so anyways welcome to another episode of the your mate tom podcast we're here in chiapas mexico mexico and we just did a epic two-week retreat one week each wow man what do you want to begin you want me to hold it how do you, how do you want to do yeah, it yeah we'll just pass it one okay. by one um how can we begin should we just begin at the what we've been doing what we've been up to in this yeah. retreats so we have been doing these retreats in mexico and we take people into the deep jungles that is here uh, in the bottom of the state leading into guatemala and we go and see a bunch of mayan pyramids and ceremonial sites of places that you probably will never see online it's a very unique opportunity very cool um very sort of transformational, spiritual kind of experience for a lot of people, myself included. It's very cool to see how much is still left to be uncovered. Like, I feel like, I remember when I first started, like, uh, making travel videos, I was like, there's, everything's already been found. Like, what could I make that hasn't already been made? But the more I travel, the more I see, like, we have no idea about our past. And all these runes in the jungle prove that, like, they only excavate a tiny percentage, just enough to turn it into a tourist attraction, and then just leave the jungle to reclaim the rest of it. So for me, I think it's uh, amazing to see that there is still mysteries on this planet, and that we really don't have any idea. We just kind of are making guesses, uh, and they're not even really educational guesses. They're just sort of public consumption to give people a sense of identity that, that we're not just mm. here f f un you know, just lost. So that's what the retreat does for me. It's been really fun. Do you think like, cause I noticed that happens a lot in kind of the archeologist community or just humans in general. I think it's like that kind of pride thing of, we don't, we don't feel comfortable not knowing, you know what I mean? It's very obvious. Yeah. It's so embarrassingly obvious. And like, even that, what was that in Palenque, the jungle hike that we did? Didn't they say we, they've only discovered like 2%? They've only excavated 2%, yeah. Oh, man. And because like we took a tour through the jungle and it's like you're going up these massive hills and he's like, yeah, this is all pyramid. Structures, yeah. And then like once you see Palenque and you see these other places that have been excavated, you can begin to make a mental image of what you're walking on. You can see the platforms and you wouldn't really know otherwise if you were just walking you would just think it was a hill like you have to kind of sort of know what you're walking on but then once you see you're like oh my god i can see this is a clear pyramid and like then we get to the peak and you just and there's just hills all over the place and there's not actually hills there are structures that are probably before jesus or at least a thousand years old you know they started before jesus. yeah some of them probably slowly, tombs slowly. and stuff yeah, like yeah for sure I think the one of the guides, Hector, he texted me. They just found like a skeleton, which they believe was. <clears throat> or like how we were walking through after the rain and there was pottery on the ground yeah. and that stuff. Yeah, there's big mysteries. The world is full of mysteries still. And with this retreat, were you surprised that this had like that kind of spiritual transformative element? Because we didn't really <clears throat> like engineer this retreat with that in mind it was just like oh yeah let's just we're going here 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 we're going on these I crazy think adventures it's the place that we are coming from hmm. like i feel like um other retreats i was too energetically overwhelmed set the tone for people but i think we we did a really good job at like um 
building that atmosphere and it wasn't really intentional it's just the way that it's supposed to be done like when we go to these sites we need to be respectful we need to recognize that they're ceremonial spots we need to recognize all the stuff that happened here that led to us being there and that when you can get into that awareness it's a byproduct of that is a spiritual feeling mm. so i think just by us telling people just be conscious of where you're walking is like enough to transform people it does set the tone because i think remember the first week we went to the uh it was one of the the jungles near uh guatemala yep yakshilan yakshilan and i think we went there a little bit too chaotic with our energy like it was, like it was cool but like we were just like being loud and laughing having smoking fun, sm yeah a lot of people smoking weed and stuff like that some people were on mushrooms yeah exactly and then we go through and there was like this stream like a waterfall coming yeah, from the and tree and this girl goes oh wow it's beginning to rain <laughs> in this very particular spot on my head and then we look up and there's just groups of monkeys like <laughs> like uh forming an army and they're just throwing the howler monkeys howler monkeys they're screaming at us and they're throwing poop and peeing on us i'll play a clip now just so you can hear how they sound fucking death metal scream and i think it started with because <laughs> philippe just went boo just like <laughs> quoting uh it was, he wasn't actually booing at the monkey it was just quoting rush hour and then it just started this fucking orchestra of howler monkeys yep. and i think from there they were like planning yeah they were definitely talking to each other orchestrating planning. a piss and shit attack. but it's because we were so loud and we were so uh disrespectful yeah. of the jungle but this time we really made this second retreat we really made in uh and uh elaboration on like hey let's come in here with respect yeah. let's recognize like a clear what, intention what, going in yeah and the jungle respected us more we could hear yeah. everything i heard all the bugs mm -hmm. and it was so quiet there was one point where i was like i couldn't even tell that we were here as a big and the monkeys did not get upset there was no poop being thrown at us and like we saw, uh, you know, like more animals and it's just more, the jungle is more, uh, at ease when you're not like causing a big disruptions through yeah, it. Exactly. Cause I think when you're being loud as well, you're scaring certain animals and creatures. We, like, saw, we saw the toucan. toucan. Yeah. We saw that cool, that one blue bird that was at Palenque, <laughs> but still, I think the monkeys were still trying to, Oh yeah. They, 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 were, us, they were, yeah, yeah, they were <laughs> as rageful, I guess. Yeah. This is what they do. They, yeah. they piss and shit on cars. We saw that in the beginning. Yeah. And we got a good picture of that. Yeah, because they were throwing shit at us, man. Bombs. Like after, <laughs> just, you probably got like one monkey actually producing this shit. And then you and probably the got another got monkey us. aiming. The bugs, the bugs are brutal. Oh, the mosquitoes. My feet are like so itchy. And I think we... Did you cop it bad? Like Because you went through the first group. This was after we went rafting. First group. Or the first week, I didn't get bit by bugs. <coughs> Second week, I was totally <coughs> eaten yeah, alive. What do you think that is? I don't know. We just, they were just worse the second week. Man, I was like running through the, the jungles. And they were telling us that they're like, they, we could potentially see a jaguar and stuff like that. But apparently, they're not the most dangerous animal to come across. It's the boars, which I believe. Well, because a jaguar, unless it's hungry, is probably really not going to mess yeah. with you. They're smart enough to know. Yeah. Probably not to mess with humans, even if they could take us Boars on. Boars are just very territorial and just like these dickheads. They just, rah, they run at you and oh, stuff. Yeah. And maybe some of them are like pigs that escaped and then metamorphosized into this wild boar and they're just like, nah, these motherfuckers, we're yeah, going to yeah, get revenge. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I would hate yeah. humans if I was a pig. I would too. It's a rough life. But it's been amazing. I love Mexico. The church, you can talk about the church. Chamula. Oh, so get this. It's like this... Because obviously, like, years ago, like, centuries ago, when the Spanish colonized Mexico and basically all of South America, and they were basically forcing Catholicism down people's throats. And I think in the Mayan culture, they had some similar symbols, like the cross. There were certain other things, like, like even in triad god and things like yep. that. And so for them, and it the was... the earth, the sort of, like, the divine mother. yeah. And so not to say that it was an easy conversion, but definitely an easier. Yeah, like so the, the Spanish show up and they have the cross already. They have this divine mother 
and, and then what what is that? Which they called the Mayans called them called the Divine Mother Tonantzin, which is kind of like Pachamama mm -hmm. or what or they call it now the Virgin of Guadalupe, mm -hmm. which is a sort of expression of the Virgin Maria. Mm -hmm. And in this church, it's like you can't take photos. Like it is a Catholic church, but when you go in, it's like pagan. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, very pagan. It's a very hybrid Catholic pagan type because it's mixture, got right? pine needles all over the ground. There's nowhere to sit like a normal Catholic church. There's candles, yeah. thousands. I mean, maybe even thirty thousand candles. There's some paintings, like right? you see, like crazy a lion, paintings a of a jaguar, jaguar, a bull, the archangel Michael. Yeah, they they. I found funny because like aren't Mexicans like the biggest con consumers oh, yeah. of Coca-Cola? So when you go there, they actually consider Coca-Cola to be this m magical brew which they offer the saints. the saints. Yeah, because the Mayans had a drink similar which was made from corn, purple corn, and they, when the Coke came in, it was easy again for them to adapt because of the carbonation which helped them mm -hmm. with digestion. Uh, because of the sweetness of it, it was very addictive for them. So they just adapted and changed, and now they offer Coke to them instead. And they shake it up and offer the gas as like a way to elevate the prayer for them. Yeah. They shake the, the Coke. So it's like it, the magical essence yep. of the Coca-Cola. And they also sacrifice chickens yep. in the actual church. Like You have a couple people who are like uncomfortable with that, but this time around we'll like just warn them like, hey, this might be a little bit full on but most people are like yeah i want to see the chicken yeah and they just pull it from the neck because apparently because if you twist it and then blood drips from the beak apparently that's no bueno and they eat it actually which is kind of weird to eat an offering like that doesn't the shaman eat it yeah well like so, the person who offered it or something i think like they that? say the shaman eats it which is strange because typically you don't eat things that you are offering like cleansing with and do you think it's like a clash, like the Mayan indigenous mythology to Catholicism, or do you think it actually mixes quite well? Or do you think there's like kind of like a contradiction? I think it probably mixes well. Yeah. I feel like it's a, it's its own thing almost. It's its own thing, but these guys make it work. I feel like they have found a way to maintain their Absolutely. traditions while having to sort of... Uh, you know, roll with the punches of what has happened to them. And them specifically, there's a village 20 minutes away that's completely different. Normal Catholic church. They're not maintaining their traditions like this area. Yeah, because this is one of the two only churches that are like that because the vast majority of churches are just traditional. Normal churches, yeah. This is Catholic. a very, very unique church. And it's, I mean, where do you see a, a church that allows animal sacrifice and, <laughs> and sort of uh, just... These bizarre rituals. And to be fair, that's what we were doing for thousands of years, right? Like that's what the the Jewish people were doing with goats and yeah, lambs yeah, sure. and stuff like that. Jesus. Jesus. But they I found interesting that they put they say that that person who baptizes a, another person is like higher up or something. So they put John the Baptist spiritually higher than they do Jesus Christ. So I guess he's kind of like the Jesus in a sense. They kind of worship him. He's like at the top. Man, that's so fascinating. Well, I guess because he cleans the, you of your sins or I don't know why. Yeah, well, because just because he was the one who baptized Jesus. So they just, because of that, they just put him above him. Yeah. That's what Raphael said anyway. I mean, it'd be cool. I'd like to hang out more and really get to know what's going on instead of just like this sort of tourist yeah. regurgitation that they feed you. And it's open 24-7. They constantly play. You can smoke like weed inside? Yeah, you can smoke weed inside, but you can't kiss <laughs> someone else. So, And they like constantly playing Christmas music. And I was like, man, it was such a... But it was actually quite special, man. I, like, I sat there and kind of just sat special. with the space. And you know, a lot of us like did a prayer. And it feels sacred in there a little bit. It does. Yeah. Like, I could imagine like some hardcore, like fundamentalist, Protestant would go in here oh, and be like, sure. oh, this is witchcraft yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But it definitely has like that kind of Catholic essence, but just with the mixed in with the the Mayan roots, you know. That's pretty cool, man. Because like you just look, it looks like a church from the outside and then you start to go in and it just opens up and there's all those candles. You're just like, holy shit. It's there's like, like thousands it, of them. Man, it's like because you're being like, you walk into a church 
and you kind of know what to expect, even if you're confronted with like beautiful murals and stuff, you're like, oh, this is a really nice decorative church. But it doesn't blow you away. When you walk in there, it's almost like takes your breath. Like, oh, mm. like you're being confronted with something you never really see. It would be nice to like learn more about that one. And then, yeah, I mean, these Mayans here don't can't even communicate with the Mayans an hour away. So even though they're both Mayan and they both speak Maya, Mayan, they communicate with each other because it's, that's how fast the language is. I mean, went to Guatemala. Actually, do you want to share the story about the <laughs> the deportation? Oh well, yeah. Someone got oh, depo <laughs> deported on accident. They kind of snuck into the Mexico. Yeah, which it's funny because like you know when you go into a bathroom and then there's like the sign and there's someone like s sitting on the toilet seat and it's like don't do this and we're like why would they put a sign like that? It's probably because someone did that. Well, now we're gonna have to start adding bring your passport, which we thought we never would have had to do, but someone did sneak in through the Mexican border without a passport. And then when we went through the immigration, it was this whole drama. Yeah, now yeah. now that like I am organizing retreats, I can see why people have to put like the obvious do nots and mm -hmm. do's, like some of the things that you would think you would never have to say. Like, like lock the door when you're taking a dump in yeah, the toilet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But we need to say those things because people don't do it. Yeah, I get it. Flush, so, flush every the toilets. Because how many times have you seen signs? And you're like, don't why piss would on you, the floor. Why would you even put that there? Like, obviously, like right now, like no smoking sign. But man, that was that was actually really dramatic because I think because he came with someone else and they kind of got broken up. And wasn't the guard crying as well? Yeah, one of the guards started yeah. crying because it was emotional. But I mean... Countries have rules, and you have to respect the rules of the country. It's like, yeah. Especially passports. Any country that you go to. Because you're like, at the end of the day, while like kind of stepping into someone's home, you know, and they, they have their own customs and regulations. And I think it's very easy to kind of judge a, a culture. Like, oh, they're, they're weird. They're doing all these barbaric things. But maybe how many things do we do that's probably fucked up? You know, Most. like. I'm sure they look at us the same way. Like, or giving uh, psychiatric drugs to like young kids or whatever. I'm just like spitballing. But. Yeah, I mean, even just our manners. Yeah. I feel like Amer although Americans are very polite, we're also rude in other areas. Uh, like you said earlier, like you noticed that the Americans don't say you're welcome. Yeah, no, I noticed that for the first time when I came in here, every American that, that I've met, when you say like, oh, thank you, they just go, mm-hmm. But well, I've always been used to like, you know, oh, yeah, no problems, no worries. You're welcome is also Too equally easy. barbaric and so it's little things those little patterns that show up i don't know what do you think of like the the groups and the the kind of mixture of oh, all yeah. these cultures and stuff and also what we were talking about how <laughs> the groups are so weird because it's like archetypes of us like different <laughs> slivers or expressions of us in these people which makes sense because they're coming because they resonate with some yeah. part of us but it's interesting to see, like, we play a game, like, guess who is in which group. And it's almost very easy to say this person's in my group or this person's in Tom's group. Like, give us an example. Like, what would be someone from your group? <laughs> like the Baba. <laughs> we have, like, uh, a guy here with his mother, Patrick. He's, like, a yogi, six foot four with big dreads. and In his beard as well. Big beard with dreads and... Uh, rude rocks yeah. beads dressed like an Indian that, sadhu that painting on the, he's got, on the forehead uh, he's got forehead uh, tilak and yeah I mean that's very obviously mine it would be very surprising if he was here because of you or like you like your guy Yannick who is like a, has the strongest fingers in the world <laughs> not that you have strong fingers but that it's that, like that fitness part of me that, that I'm into is like to the extreme yeah like focused in one direction yeah man this guy oh, he can like do pull-ups from like just the top part of your fingers you know yeah very complicated i couldn't even do one and, like, you, and he showed us a video of someone snapping their fingers and you can hear the tendon break from like, like 20 feet away and it makes like a that is what it sounds exactly like that oh could you imagine apparently it's one of the most painful things you can, oh, get, you can go through I think the Achilles tendon does oh, it as well. Oh, no. <laughs> that would hurt so bad. Okay. Like, what's another example of, like, the archetypes um, manifesting? 
more emos than mine. <laughs> more like scene kids and like people that are a little bit more like, uh, yeah, like more emotionally unstable maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But I don't know. I feel like I had that too. I was very emotionally unstable as a kid. Or like growing up. I feel like just kind of recently, maybe even still now to a certain But these guys that come from your retreat are like interested in improving and changing themselves. Hmm. I feel. Not that the people in my group aren't, but... Yeah, I feel like you'll like that as well. Yeah, definitely. But it's, uh, it's different expressions. Like yours are kind of like men looking for a rite of passage into manhood. Right. Whereas mine are like emo kids <laughs> discovering spirituality. Right. Okay. So I it's think the same thing, but it's just like... Like a different part. Like the same mountain? Yeah, exactly. Because obviously like we're combining Different forces. limbs of the same body. Exactly. It's a different, different path. Man, it's, it's going to be interesting actually like 10 years down the line getting like this massive meta analysis. Yeah. And like really cool. noticing it. Yeah, you yeah. used to be like a emo kid. Yeah. You were like deep into the... Was it like emo metal? Is that... Emo metal? No, more like hardcore. Okay. Like, like emo, would you put post Parkway hardcore, dri like early Parkway mm, Drive in that? That's starting to get out of my lane a little bit. That's a little okay. too metally for me. Okay. Like hardcore for me was more probably you've never even heard of some of these bands like uh, things that pop in my mind. Kids like us, Casey Jones, Throwdown, Terror, more like a little bit of screaming. I got into like uh, death metal a little bit like. Death, like a pig squeals, job for a cowboy. I've heard uh, of that one. You, you know, know like black metal mayhem and all that? Uh, sometimes. I don't listen to it by myself, but there, I can appreciate it. Oh, okay. It's a bit too... <sighs> too much. Too tin canny. Yeah, like, I don't know, if they improve the production, but I guess that's part of it, that's isn't part of it? it? Yeah. It's it like makes you feel uncomfortable. Scary church. <laughs> what else? Uh, Bring Me the Horizon. See, I like the newer stuff when they go more metal. new metal. No, they're more death metal than back in the day. I mean, like the later stuff. Their their new stuff. Yeah, is it more death? It's metal? more. I would call it more mainstream rock, almost. Okay, I was gonna say it's a little bit more palatable. It's more maybe a uh, fuller arena sounding, whereas before it was more just like dun dun dun, tsh, like you know, <laughs> breakdowns and. And like, what attracted you to that specific type of music? What was like? growing up with that community. Well, MySpace probably. It was MySpace came and that was just like a wave of of rock, however, you know, different avenues of rock, acoustic came, emo came, the sort of electronic synth pop, like Hello Goodbye came, Parkway Drive, Bring Me the Horizon. Like there was lots of these different uh, new emergence of rock expressing itself and I think it came mostly from MySpace, okay. Pure Volume, and there was just like all over, especially in the U.S., there was like just a wave of, of like a, like a movement, like a rock movement was happening. Mm. And that just, I just was a part of that. So what would be like a, a crossover band that maybe you and I both enjoyed that was kind of maybe one foot in one world, one foot in the kind of pure metal world? Because I, I was more into like Trivium, Lamb of God, yeah, Metallica, no, I, I never got into that. Pantera. That was always too like, that was like that's like real metal. Yeah. That's like metal heads like, like <laughs> they push pit. Like yeah, that. yeah. I was more like hardcore moshing like this type of stuff. Throwing the arms punching and people kicking, in the face. doing the karate kicks. Whereas metal people do like the circles yeah. and the walls of death. Well, I know even in metal like if someone falls in the middle of the mosh pit, everyone would stop and yeah, kind that, of lift them like, up. It's like that in hardcore, but there was there's clicks. It's very clicky. What do you mean? So like one click might not like another click and we try to hurt each other. Oh, yeah. What do you mean by click? Like there was lots of uh almost like gangs. Not like gangs, but it like uh yeah, gangs. Like one band versus another or Not bands, like for example, where I lived in Detroit, we didn't like any of the kids that would come from Ohio. So anytime oh. the kids would come from, come up from Ohio to our shows, we would always make a point to be very rough with them. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Brutal. 
Yeah, we don't like none of the Ohio people or like people coming from like the northern part of Michigan. Then when they come down, we'd be like, That's so funny how like tribal we can be with that. Like, that's his, what we are. it's not just country versus other country, it's like state versus state, city versus city, friend the, group versus friend yeah, group. Yeah, the west side of the city versus the east side of the We're city. We're tribal creatures, it's just like what we do. And everything goes like real niche, like suburb versus the next suburb or the eastern the line versus the su- streets south versus streets. eastern line. Yeah. <laughs> For real, it gets like that. In the city, streets versus streets. Even here in Mexico, car- certain cartels own certain streets. Yeah. They could be in the same city, but one cartel won't go down another street because it's occupied by a different family or a different group of friends. Do you think it's possible to transcend that part of ourselves? Like as a society, or do you think at some level think, that's always no, a part no, of no? Us? I think we're slowly doing it with the social media. There is definitely more acceptance. Like everyone, cultural appropriation. Like there's big forces that are like uh, trying to be respectful of the global culture. I don't think it's being done right right now, and I think it's like on the extreme side of the pendulum. But I think the fact that it is happening and like the people are trying to defend make us all sort of get along and respect each other means that we are progressing in that way i think Mm. i just think it's a little um misguided right in the current state which is new we still don't even know how to use the internet so of course it's going to be misguided in these early stages it's like a double-edged sword i guess because it's like bringing people together but then at the same time dividing us yes but i don't think it's, it's probably other powers that be that kind of orchestrate this thing because I was thinking, like, even it's video games, games, you got, like, it's, PlayStation it's, it's, versus it's Xbox. Six. and <laughs> We're in a game yeah. of Civ 6, and we are not the ones in control. We're just the fucking ones being walking. Yeah. And it's like a multi-leveled uh, leveled game, you know? <clears throat> like, with religion slash spirituality, culture, even scientists. Like It's you so know funny, I mean? like, uh, <laughs> like, the Hindus converted me, and now I'm, like... <laughs> Trying to spread it around, just like Civ Six. <laughs> yeah, like, all these right. fucking Hindus are here. Got to get these you, fuckers Because you were talking to some missionaries, and they're, yeah. like, spreading their seed, yeah. and then you're just, like, yeah. continuing to spread that seed. And no, then that... you'd go against, like, you know, like, in a Muslim or a Christian, yeah. and then you'd, like, battle and then see which one spreads more, yeah. which one wins. And we talk about that sometimes, how we anticipate Islam to be the dominant religion in our lifetime. Yes. I think if you were to, like, zoom out... Could you see and... yourself converting? Uh, not now, but I guess I wouldn't be like totally shocked in like 50 years, you know what I mean? I don't know. We're just like sitting on like a porch in the desert with turbans. <laughs> <laughs> Told you so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we just look back on this podcast. I mean, I know. What about you? Do you see yourself like actually converting to. I feel like uh, it's tainted by the extremism and that pushes me away from it, mm. but. When I see real Islam, I get attracted to it. Mm. Like the devotion, the community Like real, building. like yeah. not like, because uh, there's nothing like, I'm pretty, well, I never really read the Quran, but my Islam friends tell me like there's nothing that's really tries to uh, force women to be a certain way and stuff like that. A lot of this stuff is like blown out of proportion. Mm. Like they're not like core tenets of the, like you could equally go through the old testament equally go through any hindu scripture and find inconsistencies and blow those inconsistencies up but they don't really represent what the message is trying to say that's true and i feel like a lot of the extremists highlight those little niche points and try core tenets like, like absolute points, like right? women like it's uh women should cover up because it's sinful for them for men to see their hair because they might feel lustful. Mm. Like, I think that is probably not a core tenet in Islam and that everyone being treated with respect is probably more important than that point. But I feel like just, you know, extremism, that's the way it goes. You know, they take these points that they can benefit from and exacerbate them to the extreme. It's true. Like, with any philosophy, like... And that goes back to tribalism. Yeah, exactly. Because, like, even if you were to take certain niche tenets of buddhism of non-attachment and then it's like oh therefore i can just yeah. detach to everyone i exactly. don't have to love i don't have to have a preference over my mother than some stranger and take yeah. that to the extreme but then when you go deeper into buddhism it's like no no no. there's probably some reconciliation yeah, the bible paradoxes. or the buddha said like yeah that's true <laughs> but walk the middle path still. yeah like yeah. still be a normal person still treat people with respect still live and recognize the separation that is presenting itself, but 
you know, in the background know that there's a deeper connection. Exactly. So it's not like necessarily Buddhism saying that. It's just maybe one principle getting blown out of proportion. Well, it's because it's know? true. We are all yeah. one. But we have to, we can't live like that. And no. that's why the Buddha said like the middle path is the best way. Like don't get lost in the extremes because it's not like the full human experience to get lost in the extremes, to get lost in like the complete non-attachment. Yes. Because like what? You're just, you don't care if your family dies. You don't care yeah. if you eat or Because then sleep. that would be like true enlightenment, right? Like not yeah. being attached to that stuff. But at the end of the day, but like, almost, like humans but, was but then, And like. also in a kind of way, true enlightenment is being attached to those things, but not being attached to it at the same time. Mm. It's a paradox. The one and the many. Yeah. So it's like... I think all religions kind of paint that picture in different ways. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it's a paradox. I'm sure even Islam as well, like you've got like the one Allah, the absolute, but then at the same time, and you're connected to that source, but at the same time, you're a human being with a relative experience, you know, like a fragment, but part of a bigger picture. So I think something that you said in Turkey, it's like, like a flower, for example, even in, in a way, it kind of has its own ego because yes, it's connected to everything, but it's its own individual it has its own individuality, but it still needs the sun, the rain, the soil. Like it needs everything in order to operate as it is. Same with humans. And it's a completely unique expression. No flower is going to ever be the exact same as any other flower. No. And same with us. Like for us to even have this GoPro recording with this microphone sitting on this bed in this hotel, like how much history had to happen before us? Like how much wars and blood and man, I couldn't even imagine. Yeah, then I mean, we complain about the plane ride it takes to get here yeah. you know well so yeah because on the way here i was like my because my flight was like 40 hours from australia yeah, me, mine's like even if it's 10 i'm like fucking 10 hours man fuck and then because we got a layover and then this american next to me is like oh this is bullshit and he's like kind of looking at me to i don't know kind of interact give him, with give him the yeah, confirmation give him that, yeah exactly give him that validation like yeah, yeah this is bullshit i'm like man i'm not the right person to complain about this and even though i want to but it's like at the end of the day Imagine if we had to like... We used to have to walk. Like how long would it take to travel from a boat from Australia yeah, to the Yeah, we'd have to plan United like three States. months back. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave now. You leave too. We'll meet up in the middle <laughs> yeah. in like four months from now. I'll send, I'll send a raven to let you know I'm alive. And probably half the boat the will fucking, die on the yeah. way there. And then when you arrive, you probably get spears thrown at you. The raven's dead. <sighs> and then you never know. Like sometimes you don't even get to connect with your family. Like communicate over time. Fucking crazy, man. Well, here we are. <laughs> here we are. But no, I'm grateful. Grateful to be here. It's been amazing. I'm very grateful that the... <coughs> just the group, the facilitators, and just everyone coming together from <coughs> all walks of life. Because it always starts like... At the beginning, it's like all these strangers <coughs> come together. Sometimes it clicks straight away. Sometimes it takes a little bit to warm up. And then by the end, people are like family. crying. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's family. I don't want this to end. It's and uh, the, I'm thankful for the skills that we are learning from this. Mm. Like, I feel like I grow each one of these retreats, like not only like uh, in my organizational skills and my sort of mental skills of preparing things and helping people and uh, just navigating life, but also like talking to people. Mm. talking to groups is getting easier being like in service is feeling more normal i feel like we get really good um life skills from doing these retreats well like everyone's a teacher at the end of the day i try i try anyway it depends on what day and what mood i'm in but I try to listen more than I so i like to because everyone has experience man everyone has yeah. life lessons yeah all these guys doesn't matter what age Cause I don't want to be like that. You, as you get older, you're like, and then you talk to like someone half your age, and you're like, oh, I know more than you, so I'm gonna s teach you. Like these guys, like Ray and Coleman, like 20 years old, they have infinite things to teach us. And what were we doing at 20? What were you at 20 years old? Me at 20, broken hearted over girls, <laughs> fo completely focused on girls. <laughs> Broke. <laughs> lost we lost in terms of like not knowing what everything. to do with your life yeah everything and what did you do to try to did you try to remedy that just through drugs wait how, mm. when did you did you get into drugs at no. 20 
Nope. 21, 22 is when I was introduced to mushrooms. And that really like showed me, I was just, I don't know. I can't even explain it. It was just like, uh, I remember I was inside and it was like scary inside. It was like the shadows were creeping towards me from the hallway. And like, it felt like they were just going to consume me and grab me. And I was like, I got to go outside. And I walked outside and it was like entering heaven. It was like the first time I, like a baby opening its eyes for the first time. I could see every color mm-hmm. in the shade of grass. The clouds were blowing in the wind and I could feel the wind and the trees were blowing. And like, it just was this overwhelming beauty. And I was just like the first time I had ever experienced it. And it was just like, wow, wow. There's like, just this life is full of potential. And why would I, why wouldn't like, this is here every day and I'm inside letting the shadows mm. consume me when I can just go outside and, the colors are there and the trees are there and life is alive and that really woke me up and then i got heartbroken from a girl and through some inspirations long story short ended up in india did you have your channel at this time yeah but not really okay my first trip to india is when i was really like when i really built my channel 2017 at the end of the year in like october 2017 but it's been up and down there there was like periods where i didn't do anything and it's still man that's like yeah. early days it's i mean early. even technically i started a youtube channel yeah before that but it was just like i was early, i was early covers. days for sure i was like being invited to um different events with like some of the biggest youtubers at the time jenna marvels ray william johnson Cassim g ed bassmaster wow. did i used to watch all these guys smosh uh and i remember like a few years in a row i was going to these conferences in florida and I would be in the after parties and I'd just look around and it would be all the biggest YouTubers in the world, the most creative people on the planet. And they're just here and I'm just wow. like, how the fuck did I get in this room with these people? These are like the pioneers, man. The pioneers, yeah. Well, cat videos first probably. <clears throat> and then the first wave. Yeah, well, do you remember, was it Fred? I met Fred, he was there too. <laughs> oh, really? He was there, I hung out with him. I was smoking weed with some of these guys and it was interesting. Yeah, man, ten. That's a long time. And now, because I remember even just a few years ago, people ask like, oh, yeah, what do you do for, for a living? I'll be like, oh, yeah, YouTube. And they're like, what? Really? How do you make money from that? And now it's like... Pretty normal. I think it's like the most popular career choice for a kid on, like through a certain age. Maybe TikTok might be beating YouTube oh, now. yeah, TikTok. But do you think YouTube will surpass TikTok, uh, TikTok in shorts? Mm. That'd be interesting. Like, I hope it does. Maybe long term. Yeah. Maybe long term. Do you think TikTok has like a long term stay or do you think it's going to be like a Vine? I think it's going to be Snapchat? like a Vine. I think there's going to be a big push against against TikTok because they're clearly manipulating the algorithms to... Mm. And yeah. even like YouTube's being and a And their terms more... of service in TikTok's terms of service are very crazy. Even having the app on your phone. So it's not just you have to open it up for it to have access. Even if you make an account, if you make an account, they have access to all of your electronics and the, the things that you have on your electronics. Ridiculous permission, like very crazy permissions. That's giving China permission. That's giving China permission. Yeah. Fucking hell. So who knows when China That's decides, scary, man. when de- China decides, okay, we're not going to use nukes because. We recognize the planet. Yeah, it's digital warfare. They're going to say, okay, watch this. We have access to everybody's records, all the text messages, all the photos. They make everything mm. public. All the husbands cheating on the wives, all the wives cheating. All this is public. You can go in. I say, okay, I want to read Tom's text messages. I type in your name. China's got this whole folder on you. All your images, all your shit. I can go, okay, Tom in whatever this time of year, what was he talking about? Oh, look at Tom was, I don't know, fucking banging lady boys <laughs> in Thailand. <laughs> and then look at the pictures of it. Oh, shit. Any of this stuff. Uh, this politician is, you know, having orgies with gay people and he's promoting, you know, homophobic uh, rehabilitation shit. or something. And now all here it all is. And oh, you then, could probably take things out of context because you know sometimes anything. sometimes you just say like we, within the boys with your mates you would just say yes yes crazy exactly shit. like you don't mean it that, yes and that's kind of why it's funny so you just say the most horrendous yeah. fucked up shit and, and then, then they so, could just take the transcript of yep. that oh look 
look what he said. Yeah. It's like, no, no, it was in context. <laughs> but think about the social chaos that would create. That would be uh, warfare. People would be killing each other. Oh, that's a motherfucker that stole all my money. Oh, th- she was cheating on me with him. All that stuff. Biden oh, the up. politician. Oh, Biden really was laundering money in Ukraine. Politicians' heads would be on sticks. Husbands' heads would be on sticks. There would be like uh, like Purge, like the movie. And all China has to do, they already have the information. All they have to do is, we gave it to them. All they have to do is release it. That's the next step in, in, in war. <laughs> I hope not, but I think you're right. It's like digital warfare. I mean, I think... how long until they, until I can't be the only one that thought about that. Because every era, we have like a new currency, like the most valuable currency, right? Like there was a time of, Oil, gold, et cetera, et cetera. And now it's attention, I feel, right now. Yeah, definitely. That's the number one. And there's going to be, when what like when America says, okay, China really is trying to manipulate us through social media. They are trying to manipulate us through collecting data. And then we say no. And then that's when China says, well, fuck you. We already have it. Here it all is. Mm. Then America collapses because we find out all our politicians are corrupt. We find out all the religious institutions are corrupt. China does nothing. They don't even have to send a person to die. Smart. Well, if you're thinking that, like a... I hope none of them are watching this. <laughs> it's like, like taking notes. Yeah, TikTok right now is recording <clears throat> yeah, TikTok this. Thing, yeah. All right, flag this. Idea. Take a take a note. But I think if you if you think about it like a game of Civ Six, I mean that's genius. You weaken the infrastructure of the societies that you want to conquer. Yeah. Through social manipulation, yeah. Because then you don't even you don't have to do anything. You just make them stupid. You just make them overly emotional. You make them mm-hmm. hyper, hyper. Uh, they hyper identify with ex- with vulnerable traits within themselves. Mm. So you're right, and because like you identify as being like I'm a victim. I'm, I'm yes. this. I so have... you so you you right amplify that. You put it on covers of magazines. You make it a movement. Mm. So then any attack on that is a meltdown. And then through mm. that, you don't have anyone focusing on real issues. You don't have anyone focusing on becoming better. It's because now they're comfortable with having the story. With, I'm this way because of these circumstances, because of these conditions. And that's just the way it is. There's no like, uh, There's no overcoming the mountain it's just being okay with staying at this right. base here this is where i'm at because this is where i was born this is my genetics and then you yeah you make them identify with that and then you make another group identify with the opposite and then you just fucking throw them in throw them in the flames and just have them battle it out and it's, and it's dangerous man we even see. even the term i am like <clears throat> i used to identify with being depressed like you're kind of casting a spell over you all the time and then your brain starts looking at all these reasons like, oh, this is why I'm depressed. Every this day is, why I'm is new. Every day, yeah. every moment is new. But I mean, I feel like, day, you know, we get through the day, we go to sleep, it feels like a new sort of thing. But we don't have to identify with the story of yesterday and that's what we do. And that makes us very, it gives our power away. Like when we do that, when we allow these institutions to tell us who we are, they have all the power. We give them mm. our power. When they are the ones that say, um, you're LGBTQ and we're the sort of, they, they act as the voice for that community, all the corporations. And then they sort of dictate the way it is and then they, they create these uh, vulnerabilities and then they sell you things back to yourself. Mm. They make you identify with it. They take your voice and use your voice for you and then sell you products right. to fill that gap. And they pervert, like what well, something had a very pure intention, but they kind of pervert it. That's As a way to make do. profit, yeah. And then they, I don't know, people still get duped Everyone into believing. Duped. They're all <laughs> Yeah, duped. myself too, included. They're but... all duped. All of Americans are all duped. They're not fighting for anything real. They're fighting. There is some, there is some very great social uh, progress in the country, but... It's being done in through by corporations, so it's not real progress. Mm. It's just uh, it's just war, really. It's we're not really um, becoming more inclusive. We're using inclusivity as a way to be exclusive. Yep. So it's like this weird Absolutely. manipulation, and it's a hypnosis. And they 
kind of trick people into thinking that they actually care about these yeah, stuff. So, so it's just yeah. a way of making it's more money. Fucked. You know? Like yeah, because they we think we're we're fighting for something, but we're really fighting for the opposite cause. They've mm -hmm. they've and Black Lives Matter is another uh, great example of that. Is that is a cause no one can deny. Black people in, in America and in Africa and other places yeah. of the world. Well, in Australia, the Aboriginals. It's, it's ver horrific. It, there's a, a very clear history, Absolutely. and saying Black Lives Matter is a powerful statement to make those communities feel like they're yeah like, like we heard care. and we care. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. It, but then you find out all the people that started this movement. Where did the money go? There, none of the money was filtered into the communities. They all bought mansions and Lamborghinis, and all this mm. is is recorded and on taxes. We can see where the money went. And none of it went into the communities that needed it. Well, no, and I that's guess, how that's yeah. how they do it. They they have you identify with something, they sell it to you, and then they take the money. And then you're we're fighting for something that you thought was right, but you were fighting for the enemy the whole time. Mm. That's why you got to be very careful with where you're putting your money. You know, I mean, it's not really a new pattern. It's just yeah. kind of human greed just manifesting in different ways. And how many times have you heard some? famous charity that's like oh it's doing so much good for the world and then you the hillary look clinton what well, the clintons did with the katrina foundation or haiti that's what it was with the hate with haiti none of that money made it there they, they I'm raised not, i'm not familiar or like for example where i'm from in michigan we have the we have flint two hours from where i live the water the pipes are filled with lead which poisoned the water they had celebrities come out they had politicians come out they raised millions of dollars the pipes are still dirty Where'd it go? Where'd it go? You can't tell me it cost... Do we, do we know? No, we don't know. I mean, maybe someone knows. I don't know. TikTok probably knows. TikTok probably knows. <laughs> but, like, you can't tell me you're going to raise half a, million, half a billion dollars or whatever they raised. And no, nothing got fixed. There's still kids that are poisoned forever. They're still taking showers in lead-poisoned water. Yeah. They're still cooking with that water. It's like, dude, I, I can't imagine it costs more than a quarter of a million or a quarter of a billion or whatever. I don't know what the finances are, but the money didn't get distributed. So, where did we go from here? The only thing, well, the thing is, I think people get too, too caught up in fighting a big fight. And the real fight is our personal lives. Uh, a bit becoming, of Peterson in becoming, be <laughs> becoming better. Becoming better. You want to change your, the world? Clean your room. It's true. But, yeah. That is the truest thing. Is so true. If you want to change the world, be better. I think Gandhi said, "Be the change you want to see." Ramana Maharshi right. said, "The greatest gift you can offer the universe is your own realization." Yep. So, like, or instead like, of Jesus, like, what did Jesus say? Like, instead of taking the speck out of your brother's eye, take the log out of your own eye first. Yeah. You know, and it's like I think what you just said there, you nailed it on the head. Like, we're trying to fight this big. Instead of, instead of like small incremental changes that compound over time, like making your bed in the morning, drinking water instead of a Coca-Cola, being kind to somebody, forgiving more. Stop buying stuff with canola oil in it. Yeah. Stop. That's so, actually scary, man, when you find out how much shit Nestle. has. Supporting Nestle. Yes. Like these little things are very easy for us <laughs> to that do. Bill Burr one? Which one? Where he's talking about Nestle and they want to own all the water. So they, they do. I just want to own all the water. They own all the water in Michigan. They take the water. Michigan so has... That, that's the, a fact. That's a, I mean, maybe not all the water, but they definitely own like shitloads of water so and they sell it back to us. It's like, it's dude, this, private, is in, this is in our backyards. That's what Chile does, actually. They privatize water. It's fucked up. Yeah. It's fucked up. How can you sell us water on our planet? Right. So being careful of where you put your money. So that is... Of, well, yeah. okay. So we live in a money-dominated a money dominated society. Voting doesn't matter. You go check a box, it does not going to make any difference. We've seen that from our own lives. Our parents have been alive. We still have grandparents. He's joking, YouTube. Don't demonetize me, please. It doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work. It's an obedient little servant. It, it gives us the illusion that we're taking part in society. Mm. But the real way that we change and, and vote is through our money. Stop supporting these corporations that don't support the communities that you live in. And um, clean your bed. Call your mom. Mm. Pick up your trash. I think um, me and Philippa were talking about, like, sometimes you meet a lot of people who's like, 
all talking about spirituality and working with crystals and Reiki and all this spiritual woo woo stuff, and then they leave a mess behind. Yeah. You know, they leave plastic yeah. behind. It's like that's the spiritual thing to do. Or you yell at your girlfriend <laughs> right after you're done talking about the crystals, how magical yeah, they are. I've done that so many times. And we're all hypocrites to a certain degree, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Because like, I think you and I probably do the same shit. Yeah, for sure. But it's just like trying to do one step better. And that's the whole point is yeah. is the battle is not climbing the mountain. It's just the next step. Mm. And knowing which mountain to climb, I guess. And knowing which mountain. And yeah, I guess knowing your direction's a good thing to have. But if you don't know where your direction, also just follow your feet. Yeah. Like you're that's just true. make sure you're follow your feet, but keep your head up so you don't walk into something. Yeah. I think something in Hermeticism, they say like, yeah, sure. Like gaze up at the stars, but... Watch, watch where, where you walk. You, watch where you walk because yep. you'll trip over. And I think it's always like, it always comes down to like this middle path, reconciling yep. the paradox, you know, the one and the many, the physical and the spiritual. Which is even sort of Jesus. Jesus came to cleanse us of sin so that we mm -hmm. can follow this middle path. We don't have to be like, uh, we don't have to be like ascetics living like Moses or something like that or being like uh, ridiculous gluttons or yeah. something like that. Jesus took on to like to make mistakes and to grow and all the prophets did i think jesus is the only one that's like the blood free sacrifice of, free of free of sin you know what i mean if you go by the i yeah. guess official canon anyway but like all the old prophets they all did fucked up things yeah, like moses sure. killed someone and so even even old prophets have like committed murder and then they've transcended that and walked the path to god and love and i guess maybe that's the only time you can be radical with your path is love but love doesn't always mean no just love letting people walk over no. sometimes love can be tough it just depends on what situation love you're in. is also the tiger eating the zebra yeah or the lion eating the zebra <laughs> the, one, the one last night i was like showing him like a video of uh yeah it was literally yeah. a lion eating a zebra, eating a zebra like from <laughs> down up pretty brutal like the thing is, is like our love is not like a hallmark card a greeting card or something or a birthday card with a nice message love is god is going to kill you one day and that's, yeah, that's one way that's, of putting it that's grace when you can really understand what that means that you are given an experience to begin with and that, to me, is like what real love is. It's not like, uh, oh, you make me feel this way, so like, or or we're gonna have sex, or like, uh, right? I well, love that you did yeah. this for me. Love is that God gave you an opportunity, or that the universe gave you an opportunity, or it's equally hate. Everything is is an expression of love. It's it's when we think love is only the good feelings. Yes, I think that's what like toxic spirituality yeah. would be, or toxic positivity. And real grace is the calm after the storm, after mm. like what God did with Job. Mm. Like love, that's a good example of love. And then like, they call in in Islam, they call him the prophet of patience. You know, he was able to Ayub. withstand all that. Yeah, and because he really understood what love yeah. meant, and still have faith. And even when he was about to like, why are you doing this to me? And then he just, God just shows him the reality of the universe. And it's yeah, like, it's man, way it's more so complex. beyond what you can, your puny mind can understand. And it is know? love. In the background of all the suffering, there is, there is grace. And if you look at nature, things need to die for new things to be born anew. You know? And it's hard for us to see it, the love in it, but it's there. And I don't know how to look at it. I guess that's what spiritual practice yeah. is for. <laughs> And maybe, and maybe you'll even that knowledge would even deepen. I think once you have kids, I would imagine sacrifice like living beyond yourself. I think you can get there even without kids, but I would just imagine that that's when you you would get it easier. Mm -hmm. Would you like to have kids? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like a big family one day. We're getting old. <laughs> We're thinking about this shit. Because in my 20s, I'm like, nah, 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 I've got plenty of time. And then 30 hits, you're like, oh, shit. That's when, like, responsibility 
kind of way. Yeah, no, I definitely more, feel you know? like a wave of like a, it's time, you know, like mm. it's like it's like a, you just did what you did already, and now it's time to like a new chapter is opening, like your childhood is ending, mm. like that part the twenties is. Uh, well, I guess most people spend their 20s just kind of fucking off, where I feel like we really did a lot of work in our 20s, like a lot of uh, emotional work. And I guess everyone goes through a lot of emotional work, obviously, but like not many people have the opportunity to live the way that we live. Like we have nah, kind of lived nah. lifetimes in our 20s alone. So like we're blessed for that. But it, yeah. it, 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 And sometimes you take that for granted and you don't really realize yeah, until you it, meet other yeah, people. Yeah, because we live the life. Yeah, so it's like, we, this is just my normal yeah. life. And then... Again, that's why like gratitude is such an important practice that you got to constantly, because the human nature, man, it just comes back in. Then you, it's very easy for you to start complaining and taking things for granted. So it's like a const, constant work, you know. But thirty feels symbolic. It feels like, like uh, like I'm a man and now I'm in life, and it's time for me to like fully cut the cord from the nest of my house and mm -hmm. stuff like that and begin my own. And I can feel that inside, like my soul. Do you feel like, as you get an older, especially in this age, like there are certain relationships that are kind of floating away, maybe certain friendships that maybe not uh, congruent? I think a lot of life? my 20s was like that. Yeah. I lost a lot of people in the 20s as I like sort of figured myself out. But yeah, I definitely see that pattern. Was that tough? Yeah, some people was tough. But some people, mm. it just seems like. I just can't even relate to you anymore. Like, we're just not even, like, you're just on a different path. Like, there's a lot of my friends I grew up with. A lot of them actually are very, like, spiritual people that have grown a lot. But, like, some of the girls I was with and stuff like that, it's just like I could have never actually ended up with them because they just, maybe they're still living the bar life or the club life or mm. just different. Like, yeah, it's a different path. You just grow apart from people. I feel like that too. Because I think at the beginning, I'd be too overly maybe righteous of like... I'm spiritual yeah. and you just don't understand. Yeah. Like pretty much, maybe not exactly that extreme, but really, if you like zoom out, like yeah. that's exactly how I was being yeah, kind of too. thing. And maybe it's like, it's that need of like, you want to bring your friends on this journey with you. But then I think part of adulthood is like, sometimes you have to cut the cord or knowing when to. Mm-hmm doesn't mean you have to be cold and cut everyone off who's not even on a similar wavelength because sometimes they do eventually come with you on this path but i think that's where like kind of responsibility and sacrifice starts coming in because even now it's like even, uh, there's a couple friends where i'm still maybe being overly attached to because we've been friends for this long but then things happen the same pattern happens over and over again yeah. and it gets more and more painful each time or and it's also about being honest and like just saying how you feel yeah and like it's very hard to be honest with some people because you don't want to hurt people's feelings yeah it's hard man but like if someone if you think someone needs to hear something we don't ever i, I don't do that in my life ever but like that's a practice i'd like to do like be able to just be real with someone and say like i think this is a problem in your life yes and uh i love you and i want you to know that i think you could do better in this area yeah or maybe some you and yeah, you just and then you say it because i've i've gone through that actually this year where someone did something that like really hurt and I kind of just brushed it off. I do that too. And then it would just like kind of just fester in my mind yeah. and I'd be in this infinite thought loop and it'll just come again and again until mm -hmm. finally I'm like, nah, I've got to let this person know. And sometimes if they're a really good friend, you'll tell them the truth and then your friendship will actually yeah. deepen because yeah. they'll appreciate you for being real. Yeah. But then I had one that just their ego flared up and yeah. they became really nasty and that shit hurt, man. To me and then our friendship completely destroyed because of that just and you can also honest. know like that that's just pain yeah it's just I like know. a lost dude you know ex doesn't know how to ex to own up to his shit and would rather puff his chest out yeah well and especially I like, do it too yeah well especially if they do it over and over again because you give them a chance it's not like one strike you're out but if it's a common pattern that happens again and again and again then you're like, no, I'm going to forgive you. Let's try this again. Then it just happens. And then you just have to let it go. And it sucks. It hurts. I hate le leaving brothers behind sometimes, but <clears throat> deep in the soul. You I don't have much friends been. like that I, from home, that I, like I consistently talk to all the time because mm. I'm hopping around so much. 
So I don't, yeah, I don't really lose too many friends. I already kind of lost them all. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I, I went through that, that first wave from like high school yeah. to first getting into stuff. Because I think even now, I think the vast majority is still drinking, getting drunk and all that. And like, that's cool if that's what they want to do, but it's just not a part of me. I feel like I force myself to just be a part of that world where deep down I, n I never really yeah. enjoyed it, to be honest. I think I was just too anxious and lost within myself that I feel like I needed this external validation to have fun or whatever. When really it's just, it's just not my world. But some people love that, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. going to a bar and watching sports and just getting eating drunk a burger. and eating burger, just working the, a normal job. Yeah. And, it's cool. You know, sometimes I envy that. Sometimes in a sense. I see it's, the rom yeah. I see the romanticism in that life, yeah, and I feel like absolutely. I'm missing out a little bit. But it's not part of my personality, you know. It, yeah. But just like some people, it's not part of their personality to because there's always a price with everything, you know. Even like what we're doing, there's a lot more. There's a less lot security. Of sacrifice. There's a, a lot, lot of sacrifice. Yeah, there is. But it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to pay, and I've accepted that, and that's cool, you know, because the benefits for me is like way better. But then, then for someone else who has a different personality type. It's not worth it. Yeah. And they made me just want that security, that nice cushy job or whatever. And that's cool, man. It's that's a big, what we it's all a have big different leap. roles, I guess. It's a big yeah. leap to, to chase something. But look where we've where it's yeah. led us, you know? <laughs> no, because you're my bro. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. I appreciate it. We've been through like a lot, man. Like you said, like just these last, even just like last five years, man. Like how much shit has gone down? It's a lifetime. We've lived lifetimes. Like stories you could years. write, you could write a book about. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, like in India, especially. Oh man, India is so funny. I love telling. <laughs> and we're going back. It's unlimited stories, into Mexico, Peru. Yeah, and even going back to these... I like going back to countries, you know, kind of like deepening our connection deep, with Yeah, it. you deepen it and you feel more comfortable. And yeah, it's definitely better the second, third time yeah. around. And your Spanish is coming along very yeah, nicely. Speaking Spanish now. Yeah. And then imagine a year from Hindi. now, five years. Dike. Turkish. Tur Turkish. Yeah, I've been learning Turkish. I've been like polishing up my Spanish because I'm, I'm... I would say I'm fluent in Spanish, but I'm like want to get from that... 95 percentile to the 99 sometimes yeah. that small it's like in breaking bad right to get the 92 percent purity to yeah. 96 it's a big difference <sighs> yeah worlds apart you know well here we are we're That's men it. of the world <laughs> we are like uh the explorers that used to like you know oh i'm in egypt and they're writing down their little <laughs> yeah, notes yeah, and stuff yeah. we're but the just modern through, just through YouTube, we're the yeah. modern expression of that like nomads, right? Yeah, we're the we're like the dudes that were like, just fucking trap like Gordon Watson who just traveled to Mexico, yeah. met Maria Sabina or any of these guys. We're doing the same thing. Or in, do you want to talk about what's happening in India, or do you want to keep that what's under wraps for now? Oh, we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah, all good. So we're gonna go to India, and our mate Jose, actually maybe I shouldn't say names. But how how's this work? Because it's a little bit of a. We're going to bring a very powerful medicine to Agoris. Can you can you say that? Is that so, okay? Yeah. So <laughs> we are going to bring a veterinary medicine. Yeah. Which is the legal. one that is very infamous for connecting you to source. If you catch my drift. And uh, we're going to see what happens when we give it to sadhus yes. and Agoris and these people that like meditate for a lifestyle and see what happens. And make a small documentary out of it, which hopefully one day will be a bigger, uh, real production. Mm. And because I, I remember a story about uh, Ramdas giving, how, how, do you remember how many hits? Crazy, was like he said enough to to kill a man, basically. Yeah. Okay, so a heroic dose and even beyond potentially to a sadhu, and basically it didn't even because he's there, he was always in that state of consciousness. It was like yeah, like yeah, um, I live here. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it wasn't nothing profound. But I wonder with this particular medicine, if either, because there's two ways it can go about it. I feel like they're going to get blasted off. I, I think so too. There's but, no way you can't. I almost don't believe those stories about the acid. E, for like that big of a dose? Like, yeah, I, I don't know. You'd have to give it to another sadhu because there's only one story like that, right? Yeah. 
Well, and, and not every Saturday is the same, you know. Some are going to be real and some are going to be fake. Some are going to have like a real practice that might actually be experiencing psychedelics naturally through breath or whatever. Mm. Well, just like it's any, hard to say. Just like any society and religion, there are a lot of fakes out there. Yeah, it's hard you to know? say. You got to find a real one and try it with him, and it's very, very hard to find a real one. And in Varanasi of all places, is that is that all we're going to? Where we're going to? Or did we agree to Assam as uh, well? No, 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 Assam. Basically, just around Varanasi. Okay, that'll yeah. be that'll be better. Be better yeah, if we're just going for a short time, and then Turkey. And then Turkey. And. Maybe in between there, I might go to, or after, I might go to Thailand Peru. Also. Oh, yeah, Thailand. Just for a visit. <laughs> so, man, it's so crazy because I was like stuck in a cage for like two years and now I'm just like, yeah, this is it. boom, 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 boom. Yeah, Peru. but I love it. We got potentially Peru treats coming. Uh, lots of very exciting plans for any of you like, that are interested in like sort of. planning it from scratch? Peru? Yeah. 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 Okay. And like if anyone, like uh, any of you guys watching want to come. On like an adventure, check out yourmatetom.com or my website, dakotawint.com. And we both have retreats on there. And you can come hang out with us and like sort of get your feet wet in like a... You get to experience the world in like a very unique way because we take people to places that are like off the tourist zone. Yeah, yeah. Very unique places that like uh, you'll never find retreats like this. And that's why we wanted to make them is because they're so unique and these are trips that like are hand picked and crafted from us of places we have went and they're built to be transformational like life changing trips and it just not not any psychedelics or anything just like visiting crazy places around earth spiritual places sacred places and uh it's really incredible and i am 100% sure if you come on any of these retreats that you will have a life-changing experience and you like there's people that come and just stay like in Mexico yeah. like it cha- they're just like I'm not going back home and uh it's so that's common for people to cry man but everyone's yeah. crying so that just gives you an idea of like but we didn't even plan that's what's crazy for me because like we didn't really plan it to be that way but then now looking back it's like yeah it a kind of side effect yeah it's just a byproduct just being, being in this space and I think cuz a lot of people, the, one of the patterns that I've noticed is that people are kind of in the little bubble at home. Maybe they don't have a community like of weirdos like us who they can like genuinely connect and authentically express themselves. And But also go to, like, he's, like Dakota said, to these crazy places that you probably wouldn't go by yeah, you, yourself. You probably can't. If you like Google <laughs> the best Mayan runes. The ones we went to probably won't even show up, no. but they're way better than the ones you'll just see yeah. in the tourist places. More authentic. More authentic, more undiscovered, and they're just as impressive as like Chichen Itza mm-hmm. or any of these places. With way less tourists. No one's there. You'll be, we'll be the only people there for the most yeah. part. Cause that's one of the things I didn't like about traveling the mainstream way when you just go to like the famous tours yeah. and stuff like, eh, you gotta so. listen to australians in the background we still have australians in our group but they're cool yeah. <laughs> they're always one of the highlights yeah the, the australians are the best <laughs> why is that you guys from are an american, so funny from i don't an know american you guys are just funny like you guys just have like a natural like sense of uh comedy but it's not it's just your personalities like you're not trying to be funny it's just the way you guys talk the way you guys uh, just interact with the world, like uh, like what's his name, clapping his sandals Thong. in front of the thing, and you guys call them thongs. <laughs> so it's just like this funny little Australian stuff. It's just the highlight for me. And it's like I don't know, man. I think it's so cool because like everyone's like I feel like you tend to like attract more the american crew and then sure. like mine's like the international crew yeah, but yeah, like the sure. blend together it's amazing yeah because i couldn't imagine doing it like these retreats any other way yeah you know and it kind of eases the the pressure as mm-hmm. well so like combining forces and then of course we bring like facilitators who you know we love respect and trust <clears throat> and they add to the experience like oh, everyone yeah. was so grateful for everyone oh, else yeah, for who sure. we brought along yeah it's a great team this team and is really, really good. Just like a really cool dynamic. And like, what was it? I was just thinking of like another pattern that I'd noticed why people come here. 
it was like the connecting with people. But yeah, I think also getting their feet wet. Maybe. Yeah, a lot of people want to travel for the first time and they want to have the... But like a cool, safe, authentic experience. Yeah, in very a safe authentic way. and safe, organized already so you don't have to do anything. Yeah. You, you get to hang out with us who have already been here. We know the histories of the place. We have all the cool facts. We know all the locals. And uh, it's just all the hard work is done. Mm. And like It takes a long time to, for one, make it this deep in the jungle, friendship with the people in the jungle. And, and that, that's an ongoing process. So like this will just I've been doing this for with this yeah. per, this particular area for three years. So like I've been, you know, working with these people in the jungle. They know me. So like yeah. it's uh And we got a new connection. Yeah, a new, we make he, new, he might be make, our guy. Yeah, we know? make new connections. So like uh it's very uh good for people that have never traveled before and want to do something crazy. Because if you come by yourself in Mexico, you're almost unless you're like a wild person, you're almost do what we do yeah it's i don't know you you have to be very careful especially if you dress obviously like a tourist or like a yeah like a white like typical hippie yep, and yep. stuff like you're you're meat to these people you know yeah but then when you're with a group it's like it's a completely different vibe yeah. you know with the spiritual transformative aspect of the retreat i feel like that could be cool like adding more of that element you know, because yeah, like it kind of happened by accident, but I yeah. think it needs to be honed in on. And yeah, like get more like sweat lodges to my skull, maybe go even deeper into the jungle, do some like shamanic ceremonies, breath maybe work. More, yeah, more like maybe workshops. So I kind of have a cool hybrid of that spiritual transformative, but in a grounded way, not in the too woo woo sense, kind of grounded in reality, but also like epic, crazy adventures. That, yeah. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's this, that's a great service for us to offer to people. And it's good for us. And it's good for the community here. Everyone wins. Yeah. So what's the plan this year? For the rest of the year? Christmas. That's it. I'm getting married. And Tom's getting married. And then, yeah, just... I'm going to relax the rest of the year for the most part. And then... Like when we start in March. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to start even a little bit before that. Maybe go to Thailand before that. So just, yeah, I'm just going to spend time with my family, hang out. True. Well, it depends when. Maybe you could take advantage, go to Thailand True. on your Australia leg. Because yeah. it's like super cheap. But I got to be, ha be back for Thanksgiving. Which is? 25th of November. Okay. So when, do you, when are you thinking? Uh, well, I'm not sure. What are you thinking? Maybe a week, a few days before when, the twentieth. When is the exact few, wedding? Twentieth the, of November. Twentieth of November. That's is actual the actual wedding. wedding. Yeah. And moon. We and might we not even. To? We might not even go because of the monsoon. But if we do go, it will be in December. So it won't be why you guys. Why, yeah, why you and me being home for Thanksgiving is not a big deal. Just Christmas for sure. But maybe you could take advantage and. Go to some cool Aussie sites. Yeah. Anyone watching, would you be keen for like an Australia retreat, like out, out in the bush? I'd like to go see some Aboriginal artwork. Like walkabouts. Like the ancient stuff. Well, see, Jared is really good with this kind of stuff. Like yeah. he knows like, oh, like where Aboriginal paintings where they depict aliens, the aliens like the Palladians and things like that. Yeah. That would be pretty the cool. The dolphin you... people in, <laughs> uh, where's that at? The Dogon people? That's not in Australia, but... It's just uh, made me think when you said aliens. The dolphin people. Yeah, the dolphin people in Mali. Mali? That's a country, right? Mali? Is it? Malai? Mali? I don't know. Anyways, they, yeah, they think dolphins came from the stars and they depicted them in ancient paintings. Well, because then they say their brain is like four times bigger than ours or something like that. Sasquatch adventure we were thinking. Sasquatch adventure. <laughs> and Canada going to search for Sasquatch. We've got lots of good retreats potentially <laughs> planned. I feel like I have to bring Jared. We oh, have yeah, to bring sure. Jared on this. That would be a fun one. He is sassy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like the most famous Sasquatch cartoon. Mm, Maybe yeah. the most famous Probably. Sasquatch in the world. Yeah, he might be the most famous. There, Harry. Do you know Harry and Hendersons? Mm, no. Yeah, he might be more famous. <laughs> Someone watch it knows who Harry and the Hendersons are, though. Canada. Speaking of Canada. <laughs> Hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? Fuck you, guy. 
What did the Spanish priest say to the Arabian gynecologist? <laughs> Coleman is Canadian, one of the facilitators, never heard of Terence and Philip before. Yeah, I mean, they made Canada seem like the worst country <laughs> full of terrorists, and they're the reason that Satan comes back. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like they would have a good sense of humor about that. Like, it's hard to get offended when Canadians, something's so extreme. No, Canadians have good humor. There's a lot of good comedy that comes out of Canada. Trailer Park Boys, John Candy. How do you balance this travel YouTube life? No, I feel it home? a lot. Like I, I, It's a constant shadow. Do you like, miss it now? Uh, like, not in this you... exact moment, but like maybe it'll hit me once in the day or something like that. Mm. But then when I go home, I miss this. So it's like I miss... I, I, the grass is always greener. Yeah, I was at. literally going to say the same thing. I feel like a maybe a one... One month on, one month off. Because I feel like I love going home, having my anchor, but then it's very easy for those old habitual patterns to start forming back. I and get, then I get bad comfortable. Bad habits when I get home. Yeah, that kind of rut. Yeah, I get and bad habits all every time I'm home. I was just important to like be the architect of your environment, you know? I was, like, I was reading this book, Atomic Habits, and it's just like little things, like not leaving junk food around the house or... Like, let's say if you want to quit smoking, you know, just leave your tobacco on the table. Or if you want to drink more water, start leaving water bottles everywhere. Yeah, it makes sense. Or your gym gear. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, like you like you said, pack your gym bag the night before. Yeah, exactly. Once, those once little you're motivated. Tasks, those little tasks, your ego will be like, uh, oh, you didn't pack your gym bag today. I guess you don't have to go. Because you will, it's like a video game, man. Your willpower is like your stamina bar. And yeah. it just decreases, decreases every little tiny decision. Yeah. Whether it's ordering something from a menu to yep. doing a big life decision. For sure. Takes a similar amount of energy. Absolutely. Good guests coming. Yeah. And we'll, I think in Australia, it'll be cool to do a live podcast with Dakota, myself, and, and Jared. And also Wilfred's because, Australian. Invite him to the wedding. I think he lives, <laughs> he lives in Spain to. or something. Uh, does he? But that would be a cool podcast because that's another uh, OG Australian. Yeah, I've got to get... I've got a couple cool... I don't know, I don't like sharing like what guests come on because then sometimes it doesn't go through and I'm yeah, like, well, yeah, what happened yeah. when you said this? It's yeah. like I almost jinxed jinx it or whatever, it. Yeah. but I'll say it when it happens. But I've got some pretty cool. I know I've been like so, I haven't been super disciplined with my podcast episodes. It's hard. It is. It's like combining this with like YouTube videos and it's like. Short, you know, now you got to do shorts. Shorts, you reels. reels. Yeah, it keeps getting harder. And that must, I know because like shorts is cool because that's what you the YouTube algorithm is kind of promoting most, but then you get like a fraction of the revenue compared to long I don't long think form. you even get any revenue from it. Because you got like fucking crazy amounts, man. I'm going to start getting on the shorts wagon, the reels, yeah. TikTok, or Tick hire someone else. I, I just, I, I fucking, I just really don't like TikTok, but maybe that's the old man in me. They already got our info. Yeah, doesn't matter anyway. Well, so click subscribe. Want to share Your anything? Mate Tom podcast. <laughs> DakotaWin.com. YourMateTom.com. Catch you guys next time. Peace out.